Thanks. So, um, Feminist Theory Group would like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri and Bunurong lands that this talk is taking place on um, and acknowledge that these lands are still undergoing colonisation. Um, we'd also like to thank the curators of Liquid Architecture, Danny and Joel. Um, the panel tonight is titled How to Talk About Theory and the participants are Eva Birch, Cinnamon Templeton, Aurelia Go, and Catherine Botton. Uh, the panel will go for about half an hour, followed by discussion with the audience. First, Eva Birch is a writer and academic. Her favorite text so far in theory group is A Grand Theory of Female Pain by Leslie Jamison. Thanks. I was writing a funny poem for tonight, but it wasn't working. I think it's because recently I've grown a little bit into a serious voice. Last year, last year I reached a breaking point, like I'd reached a threshold of feeling like I had no agency in my romantic relationships. It felt like my time to speak had come, so I did. Then I cried in a gallery in a circle of feminists and no one said anything. This was hard, but also the start of really good things, like friendships with Aurelia, Catherine and Cinnamon, <laughs> and other people in feminist theory group who I've got to know. Um, this was all really exciting for me. A lot of my work is looking at the origin stories used in Western philosophy and feminist theory, particularly ancient Greek mythology and psychoanalysis. At Columbia University lately, they've tried to institute trigger warnings when teaching Greek mythology. I watched the 2004 film Troy, starring Brad Pitt with my girlfriends at a beach house somewhere when we were teenagers. 2004 was full of stories that really formed me, like the OCTV series and the movie Closer both kind of about having it all and still being sad. I was 18 and learning about life. Comparatively, Troy was so boring. I hated all those male complex narratives. Men going to war, men going to war. I rewatched it recently though. The premise of the story is that Agamemnon the king sails to Troy to reincarnate reclaim Helen, the most beautiful woman in the world, who is played by Diane Kruger. One of the many stories the film leaves out is about Electra, Agamemnon's daughter. She's famous for screaming. In psychoanalysis, there is a thing called the Electra complex to describe hysteria caused by penis envy. But before that, we know that she kills her mother and then has no one to talk to about it and so she screams. The one everyone forgets, though, is Iphigenia, Electra's youngest sister who is sacrificed like an animal by their father. This is a deal made with the goddess of fertility so that she will give him good weather for the journey to Troy. We can learn from this story that the patriarchy does not only make women crazy, but that it also makes them dead, like Iphigenia, Marissa Cooper in the OC in season three, and also people that we don't even hear about. The patriarchy is a colonial process of sacrifice. Capitalism continues this process of sacrifice, whereby people, animals, plants, and things get instrumentalized or thrown out and the goddess of fertility does not even figure anymore. I think the aim is to sacrifice patriarchy itself, telling stories differently. In some accounts, Iphigenia is found again and reunited with her family, like in a TV melodrama, bringing back a character that everyone thought was dead. A good storyline might be about a screaming sister and a silent sister reunited. This could be about me and my friend or about two parts of myself. Fantasy can repair stories, mysticism, music, that kind of thing. 
When adrenaline enters my body through the internet making me sick, I watch a princess Nokia video clip and tame my consciousness enough to get up and go for a walk. I sacrifice the urgency of politics. It is spring and it feels like everything is opening up. The smell of jasmine, the sun and the asphalt. It all combines to make me come back into myself. This is another fertility story about sacrificing the generalised order of sacrifice to make room for something new. It isn't about much and that's why it's about everything. When I'm walking in silence, I can think of how to talk. To be honest though, I finished this while listening to Beyonce. Theory is never clean and I will never not be evil, but I want to be with you. Thanks, Eva. Uh, next is Cinnamon Templeton. Um, Cinnamon is about to finish honours in literature and their best piece in theory group is Queering Prison Abolition Now. Um, so this is a sort of personal mythology that I built up around my friend and housemate, Callan. Um, so a theory of Callan. <laughs> Callan! I scream into the room when I see her. Uh, she is visually astounding, one of the sexiest people I know. Stomping into the room, Callan is forever horse-like, galloping. She's a Sagittarius. I also say that she dresses like an Afghan hound, really flowy and flouncy, luxurious. <clears throat> um, and she has really long, straight brown hair. Her magnetism is such that she can take these two misogynistically mobilized analogies, so woman as horse, woman as dog, and make them positive again. They're actually beautiful animals. Callan did a dance to that song, Now I Wanna Be a Dog, at half speed, in some little room in Fitzroy. It was really slow and mesmerizing, but then it was jerky and violent. She got down on the ground and you could feel all the eyes in the room burning into their sockets. And she took us all of there with her. And then afterwards she flounced off stage like nothing had happened. We started living together a few months ago, and I was very excited. And I think she was excited too, but uh, about trans femmes living together. One of the more noticeable things at first was the music coming out of her room almost constantly. Um, it was a lot of good stuff. Um, not all good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rasheen Murphy, Amanda Lear, Kate Bush, Aria Negro. Um, and she introduced me to a lot of people as well. Um, but I think it's always a bit naff listing the artists that we're into, but I think there's something in this list anyway. Our tastes align a lot. I hear Callan wailing out these songs from her room, the music she lives her life to. A lot of it music I live my life to as well, before and also after. I was leaving for class one day and she came bounding down the stairs to give me a kiss goodbye. She said she catches herself doing some things, saying a phrase or moving in a certain way, and thinks, oh, cinnamon. Before that, I thought it was just me absorbing her. I love this Ulrika Dahl quote that responds to the accusation that femmes get lost in the mirror, the reflective pit of solipsism. She says, no, femmes are mirrors. We mirror each other. And this is my ad lib bit. Um, one day I was coming up the stairs to there's a chalkboard at the top of our stairs. And um, Callan had drawn a single eye on it and wrote underneath, everything belongs to you. And I was, well, my first reaction on seeing it was like, Callan ate my avocado. <laughs> <laughs> and I was really angry. Because <laughs> I needed to have an, I really need to have an avocado every time I left the house that week. <laughs> like, I don't know why, but I couldn't leave without eating an avocado. Um, 
And I was like, everything doesn't belong to you. <laughs> <laughs> and then it sort of went into this um, like further critique or something, me responding to the quote, like, um, like a typical like a white woman thing to to say, like everything belongs to you. It's like a, it's like a logical consequence of the way that whiteness is constructed or something. Um, and then, um, but then I was thinking about the positive ways that I could see the quote, like um, she gave me a couple of, she gave me advice a week before where she said something similar because I was supposed to go to a, f a place that I, well, I was invited to go to a place and I couldn't, I really didn't want to go there because I'd had a few horrible encounters there. And she was like, no, that space belongs to you. Go reclaim it. It's yours. And like, make it good. And so I went and I made it good and I had a good time. It was, it was fine. So it was like, yeah, seeing different ways of reading this little thing that she wrote on the wall. Um, <laughs> but then a couple of weeks, and I didn't speak to her about it, but a couple of weeks after that she, oh, we, yeah, we didn't speak, but a couple of weeks after that I came up the stairs and she'd filled in the face. So it was like another eye, um, a mouth. It was a picture of her um, because she always draws self-portraits and they're really good. Um, and she changed the quote to, everything is you. Um, and so, yeah, my, like I was like reflecting on that quote and didn't speak to her until I asked her whether I could say this thing tonight. But <laughs> um, yeah, I really liked that this, like seeing her like develop this idea and it was very influential for me um, to see this like, that phrase develop into a fuller picture and a way of like inhabiting space that isn't about property or ownership, um, but is like in, embedded but also like, doesn't necessarily resolve those things. Like I think it can be, I think that's an issue like for, for women, for trans women, for trans people in general, it's like how to be in space like, and be okay. Um, and so it brought up a lot of things for me and um, yeah, I still don't know what I think about it, but um, I'm really glad I live with Callan. Love you, Callan. <laughs> In. Uh, next is Aurelia Go. Uh, Aurelia is an artist and writer, and her favorite reading was Against Innocence. Hi. Century of the Self. You sympathize with Carrie Bradshaw and just need to feel the weight of a man on top of you, big, happy, and close to giving birth. I'm the boy that cried wolf. The personality usually gets lost forever, part of the fabric of your life. I don't want a radical subjectivity or subjectivity or to speak at all, stop happening Stop collecting you. Told you I was using you. You don't come around. See dick come down into the ground, into the earth. There it's dark. You groaned, hid yourself, and didn't think. Paupers like us see every structure as the ruin it will turn into. Horrible truth being that the future is a continuation of the past. Not thinking, is this who I am now? Talk to you more than anyone. Sometimes you're the only person I talk to for days. Don't I seem it? I'm not invited to their dinner parties. We live in a big group of photos. Big t-shirt and boy shorts. Rope sandals, rape sandals. You are my pet, fucking in front of a monument, evergreen admired. Hold the phone. I think this is my ex cheating on me. I've been looking for this video for years. Keep crying though, you fucking neckbeard. Pole dancer body and I unfriend white people who go to Africa. 
I've sinned, but I'll throw the first stone. My struggle. Did you know all of today's greatest poets are rappers? I have my own personal hell of objects. No substitutes. You carry my thing around. I get it now. You're the reasonable person. I've hurt you. We were in a group show. Then we had the same beer. I used your iPhone. I don't write. I don't write. Bye. <laughs> Body looking for something unusual to preoccupy and pass the time. You tell your dad to do a magic trick and he disappears. <laughs> do you have kids? Do you have plans? Do you have regrets? Women who fail at joy. You eat in the fourth dimension. That is time. In gutters. McDonald's makes every face haggard. <laughs> Learn the rules, count the tips. I guarantee I'm a better lover than your boyfriend. The same core structure subject to infinite subtle variations. Forget confessional art. I paint with my back to the world. Pre-verbal infantile bliss. Little children loving love. I love the whole world. Lovely life. Infant response to love. Changes hands for millions. I can remember the moment of my birth. I entered the world with a sword. I was very happy. I would cut my way through life. Victory to victory. Half my victories fell to the ground while very, very slowly pushing a pram. I can tell your work sucks. No more problems when I can walk naked in my apartment. Not just health, but personality and morality are structural. Capital equals oral. Smoking, drinking, lipstick, flow job. She was so close to the river, she could see the expressions on the sailors' faces. The walls were so thin, she could hear them do up their flies. Well, they got forced to move but they were forbidden from moving. They got punished for moving. The borders were drawn by the colonizers. Animals that eat honey are courageous and careful, like the bee, the bear, and the hummingbird. Sugar eaters are dirty, like the housefly, the ant that lives in the sugar bowl. Sugar is made from blood. Nature is like parting a curtain. You go in. Uh, thanks, Aurelia. Um, next is Catherine Bodden. Catherine is an artist, writer, and curator, and her favorite reading was Women on the Market by Ari Gray. What We Do Is Secret, Feminist Reading Group, Monday Nights, Lavender Essential Oil Is Burning, and We Are Eating Hummus With A1 Bakery Bread. We have Eva's rugs, and I'm wearing three duck down jackets, and we're sitting on Eva's couches. It's an, or an orange lit lounge room in Brunswick West. I'm asking what words mean. I'm texting while talking. I'm going home after and I'm eating a second dinner. Feminism. Xanax to read a poem. How to talk about theory, I don't know. How not to talk about theory. Masculine, nihilistic, brooding men, dictionaries, thesauruses, marble pillars, colonial state libraries. How to talk with theory this poem, how to live theory inside your body. 
Feminist reading group, what we do is secret, drinking tea and texting and burning lavender essential oil and eating hummus. Setting the ambience right is how to talk about theory. What would a feminist methodology sound like? Nietzsche, Hemingway, Derrida, Freud, Deleuze, Greenberg, Lippard, Zizek, Barthes, Foucault, Hughes, Lacan, Benjamin, all the guys making theory count. All the people you're meant to read to make you smart. Cinnamon, Catherine, Aurelia, Eva, a performance on a Friday night. Irigaray, Jackie Wang, Jerry Saltz, Hannah Black, Leslie Jamison, Chris Krauss, Eileen Miles, Anne Boyer, Sarah Ahmed, Anne Carson. In my job, I get feedback from my supervisors because of the way I speak. Because up talk means the person on the other end of the phone won't trust what I have to say. Leaving all Facebook groups. Months turn into years. Stevie Nicks reveals why writing is so important to Oprah. Even the biggest moments in your life will fade away. When people say safe, but they actually mean comfortable, a quote by Aurelia Go. The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, they watch the sunset from their balconies every night. Looking forward, moving forward, comfort or safety, how to talk about theory, not academic, anti-alternativist, care, don't care. Not everything has to be your best shot. Not everything is a great opportunity. A holiday that never ends, get myself back from years ago. What would a feminist methodology sound like? Catherine, um, now we'll take some questions from the audience. Sorry, I might have missed it, but with your group, um, are you the sole group or is it ex extended to others? Um, it's, there's about like 87 people on the mailing list at the moment um, and yeah, a lot of different people have come um, at different times. Yeah, it kind of just grew, I think, yeah, it started in November or December and kind of grew kind of from a Facebook group um, that Aurelia and a couple of us started and just through our normal friendship networks as well. Um, yeah, but usually it's about, the most is like 20 people or something. Um, so usually it's about six or <coughs> so. Yeah, we're like representing tonight. But yeah, there's a lot of other people, some of whom are here tonight, who are totally part of the group. Um, I think Catherine sort of summed it up in her poem. <laughs> so we scream and eat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, once a month. So um, Eva will send out an email and it will have a link to a reading and we'll all read it and then we'll meet together and we'll discuss the reading and like bring out printed versions of it and we will talk about bits that we liked and didn't like or didn't understand and um, we eat while we're doing that. Not much screaming happens but you're always welcome to come next time if you want to bring that. <laughs>
Well, I was really afraid someone was going to ask that question. <laughs> and we talked about this backstage. And my official answer was going to be just because I wanted to do it. <laughs> but I think that you covered it. There was a lot of frustration and it just felt right because of, yeah, what you were saying fits in with what I was thinking. And it's my answer to the question posed. What does a feminist methodology sound like? That's my answer. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the question, though. <laughs> oh, and then, and then when, when you were talking about feminist, I, I am an expert on Greek mythology by any means, but with your reference to the certain female. Electra? Yeah. Yep. It's like, what about a scene around this own artist? Yeah, yeah. No, there's there's a really big tradition of um, yeah, exactly. There's a really big tradition of, um, especially in feminist uh, philosophy, to um, pick out kind of strong women characters. Like Clytemnestra is another one, who's Electra's mother. Um, Erigore uses her, um, and I guess I was interested in picking. Um, I kind of was quite brief, and I kind of said a lot quickly maybe, but I picked Iphigenia, who's Electra's younger sister, because she gets killed by her father and he like gags her and then just like sacrifices her to Artemis. And I think the silent ones can be really interesting um, because uh, it speaks more to a kind of object status that isn't so... Um, kind of easy to appropriate in models of like legisla legislation and like jurisprudence that actually feed into colonial narratives, I guess. So I wanted to be like, what are the silent, what's the screaming sister and the silent sister, like the silent ones that we don't even hear about or something, like the mad, the mad white woman and then like the silenced woman of colour who doesn't have any representation or something like that putting it like really broadly, <laughs> really bastardising what I'm trying to say, but yeah, there's a whole tradition of like speaking from the object in writers of colour like Fred Moten and like Jackie Wang, who draws from Fred Moten, who, who kind of speak about the object, um, like feminist theorists speak about woman as object, that's kind of the broader thing, <laughs> does that make sense? Um, I guess, yeah, I, I'm studying at the moment, so um, life isn't very separable from theory for me. 
um, just in terms of my schedule, but also in terms of like the way that I think and um, yeah, and, and my my anecdote, I wanted it to like draw on like a relationship that I value a lot um, and things that I've learned from that um, and like sort of put, and like it has been as influential for me, if not more so than than theory than like reading theory or something and like sometimes it is quite literal like drawing things on the wall like Ka yeah Callan writes a lot of things on the wall and I read them and um and have a moment or something or yeah so it's not yeah it doesn't it doesn't start from a separable place necessarily for me yeah but even though maybe we're encouraged to like to separate them later yeah um uh well, a lot of, I mean, this seems so loud. Um, a lot of my writing kind of is written on my computer and like kind of really engaging with like a lot of the reading and writing that I do on the internet, like sort of, I mean, like as a practice and then sort of in like that huge zone in my life where like my practice or like just my personality or like engagement is like melding. And so, yeah, I think like I would say as well that like it, you know, like, that the lines are really blurred, and, um, yeah, like, writing is sort of, like, where I do most of my thinking, and um, the writing that I do online is kind of more, like, talking, or, like, has a lot of ties to, like, kind of oral ways of expression, rather than, like, traditionally written ones, and so, yeah, I mean, like, I really enjoy being alive right now, and, like, the way that technology has, like, brought these things together. <laughs> Uh, so we've got time for one more question. Um, have you guys published your work anywhere? Or any plans to do so, perhaps collectively? Um, yeah, we've been talking... Uh, yeah, we've all published... Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think we've all published different things under like kind of our own names and like this might be the first like public thing that we're doing as like the group because the group is sort of semi-private, semi-public space or something where like the, you know, people have, have been free to like join the mailing list and like free to come. Mm. But um, this is like us doing something that's like set. But um, we, we've never published something as feminist theory group if that's what you're asking. <laughs> yeah. But, we've all but we really want, them. that's like a project for next year that I've been, I really want to do. And yeah, we've talked a tiny bit about it. Um, but yeah, we've all published recently in um, Un Magazine elsewhere as well. But yeah, our friends Pip Wallace and Aidan and um, Beth edited a volume on feminism that we're, all of us have published in. So that's kind of a. <laughs> Oh yeah, space that's nice. that we're all in, I guess, but not as feminist theory group as our individual like yeah. identities. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, definitely want to do something next year if you guys want to. Should explain how to join the group. Yes, if you want to join the mail out, um, it is feminist theory group at gmail .com. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to, and if you want to ask any more questions over email as well, yeah, please do, yeah. Or if you saw Aurelia's presentation, if you want to PayPal us some money, you can also <laughs> send your money to feministreadinggroup at gmail.com. <laughs> we don't have a PayPal account, but yeah, we can use, I'm sure Aurelia can divvy it out, yeah. <laughs> Feminist theory group at gmail.com, everyone, please give them a big round of applause. <laughs>